Members of the squad. Family. What words can I possibly use today to describe the scenes of what I have seen today? The pictures of children being put behind fences while Kate Milton and Prince William greet them. Some of them even, they look so afraid of even coming anywhere near them. They're just black kids. You won't get anything from touching them. You'll get nothing, nothing. They won't harm you, nothing. But what I've seen today are the most disgusting pictures that I have ever seen in my entire life. Just see for yourself. This reminds me of what happened during the time of slavery. We can't, we can't, I just don't understand how someone, Kate Milton's and Prince William's PR team, can ever think that this photo could ever be a good idea. I just, I don't understand the logical reasoning behind it. Or perhaps the reason they did it is perhaps to send the message that they want to send. That this is how they view people of color, people who, people who look like me, black people like me. This is how they see them. People should be put behind fences, just like what they're doing right now. And these are the most disgusting things that I've ever seen in my entire life. I don't even understand how someone would ever think this is a good idea of an attempt to get some PR photos next to black people. I, I just don't understand members of the squad. I really, really don't. Perhaps someone from the squad can explain to me how this was ever a good idea. Because to me, this isn't. This isn't. Like, what was their thinking? Perhaps if someone can understand what was their thinking behind having these kinds of photos and staging them for PR purposes. Did they really believe that these photos would go down well with black people and people of color, people who look like me? Did they think that this would go down well? It wouldn't. Now, people have been protesting and unhappy with Prince William and Kate Milton's PR visit. Now, someone, a little young girl, posted, you know, placards saying that, who voted for the Queen? Not me. Governments should be chosen by the vote of the people. The girl's mother said this, the mother, the monarchy, is a relic from an era when people believed women were property, the earth was flat, Columbus discovered anywhere, Let's get current, get rid of the rule of the queen. Abolish the monarchy. The people of Jamaica are fed up with the colonial government. They have had enough. And William and Kay should stop the oppression. They should stop it. The scenes that I have seen with my own two eyes. The photos released by Cambridge PR group, Kensington you know, Palace PR, has been the most disgusting, although unsurprising, photos. It just reminds us what happens of a family that views itself to be of the highest bloodline ever. A family that regards people like me, people who look like me, black people, as nothing but they're slaves, and you can see it from these photos of how they see and view black kids. And even Kate Milton, how uncomfortable she is, and when she gets, when she's around black people. And the fact that when you see this, look at the how the Jamaican government, what it has done to black people, also that Kate Milton 
can get her pictures. It's disgusting and reminiscent of slavery. And I just can't ignore what I'm seeing right here. Even if you want to take pictures with black people to show people, hey, look, I am not a racist. I have pictures with black people, which is something common for members of the farm, members of the royal family. Even if you want to do that, like, seriously, can't you pick another way? Whoever advises them in Kensington Palace is either extremely racist and clearly wants William and Kate racism to show. I mean, Kensington Palace is exactly where all members of the Rocher said they leaked and got their full stories about Meghan from. The only mixed race woman in an all white institution was chased out of the UK. They ran Megan out of the UK. Now look what William and Kate are doing. It's just wrong and cruel. Someone should have told them it wouldn't be a good look. Was this picture supposed to look good for the royal family? Because this is not a good look. This isn't. This isn't. I mean, you as Kate Milton and Prince William, especially for Kate Milton, you are in a PR tour with cameras watching you. And this is how Kate behaves. I've seen a video of Kate Milton practically ignoring a woman, a black woman trying to touch her, touch her hand. It just show, goes to show you what they really see. What they see from us, how they look at us and what they see. Now, if this is how they behave in public, while the cameras, in the full glare of the cameras, they, their racism is showing, just imagine how they treated Megan in private. It makes perfect sense, you know. It makes completely perfect sense. Look at Kate Milton, the leak that happened that a mixed-race black woman had made the future queen, white queen of England cry. That lie that festered, that was allowed to go and publish on the front pages of newspaper articles after Camilla Tomini's The Liar was told, the mixed-race woman made the future white queen of England cry. You know, whenever I heard that story, I was suspicious from the onset and didn't even believe anything about it and i was right megan confirmed in the interview that it was indeed kate milton who had made her cry megan was the guest she was about to marry into an all-white institution the fact that camilla tomeni is a liar even wrote that article and believed it for one second that a mixed race black woman could make the future white queen of England cry, that thought in itself is can clearly show you the embedded racism that some people exercise. And it's just, it's really, really, really wrong. Now, even Politics Joe tweeted this and said this. Why did they think that this was a good look? This is a tweet from Politics Joe in the UK. They said, why did they think this was a good look? Why would they even think that this would look good for the pictures? The pictures that we saw of Kate Milton basically greeting black children who were behind fences. I mean, they even brought up, they even brought Raheem Sterling, a football player. A football player just to try and bring in the crowds because they'd obviously come for Raheem Sterling after they were getting so much bad, bad press. And this is just so wrong in many, many levels that I have ever seen. This is just too, too wrong. Now, I have a few things to say about this. The British Empire 
controlled Jamaica for more than 300 years to this day and forced hundreds of thousands of African slaves to toil the island under brutal conditions. And the pictures you see are just to the royal family, the farm and the tabloids. It's just normal. This is how they see, they see black people. This is how they see them. Allow me to feature this today because this is such a painful topic for me today. Because whenever I look at Prince William and Kate Milton, I realize that's how they see me. That's how they see people who look like me. And it really, really hurts. It's not surprising, but it just really hurts that in the year of 2022, this keeps on happening to people who look like me. Black people. Our protest protesters in Jamaica actually met up with Prince William and Kate with demand that UK apologize now for slave trading past. They've held demonstrations. And protesters in Jamaica raised their fists on Tuesday as they donned t-shirts emblazoned with a pair of shackled black wrists surrounded by the phrases, say a sorry and apologize now. As they demonstrated just hours before Prince William and Kate Milton arrived, to the point that Prince William and Kate Milton practically had to fly in Raheem Sterling all the way from the UK to Jamaica. Now, Raheem Sterling is proudly from Jamaica, and they flew him all the way from the UK to Jamaica just to get him to pull in the crowds. Prince William, who condemned racism on black football players when it happened, who was actually held to account and told, how come you never condemned racism towards Megan when it happened day in, day out? But yet you right now want to perform when black football players were subjected to racism after the England match, the Euro Cup finals, where England lost their match to Italy. People have not forgotten and people just will not forget. These performative acts of trying to say you're not a racist or though not showing it. When your sister-in-law is subjected to racism, as Megan was subjected to racism, Prince William, Kate Milton, they all kept quiet. UK tablets went after Megan. They went after Megan while pregnant. None of them ever spoke up. The Queen of England, Queen Elizabeth, who is worshipped in the UK. One word from her could have stopped the racism that Meghan was facing. Just one word. But she didn't. She was quiet, she remained silent. Prince William, yet at that time, when England lost its Euro Cup final match to Italy on the penalties, they blamed black football players. At that time, he condemned racism. People reminded him that he never said anything when Megan was pregnant, while she was being racially abused by UK tablets, she remained silent and called out his perform performative acts. Because those that's what Prince William does. These are performative acts by Prince William. And you can clearly see it. Because he clearly doesn't mean it. Now, protest in front of the, in front of the British High Commission in Kingston comes a couple of days after dozens of prominent leaders in Jamaica publicize a letter demanding that Britain apologize and award its former colony slavery reparations. They also decried the week-long Central American and Caribbean tour that the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge embarked on Saturday, which coincides with Jamaica's 60th independence anniversary and 70th anniversary of Queen Elizabeth II coronation. A young girl also held the placard saying, King, queens and princesses and princes belong in fairy tales, not in Jamaica. Read one poster held aloft by a young girl who joined the protest. Now, this, I'm very, very thankful for the young girl who came out and said that. And it's true especially in Commonwealth countries that have the Queen as the head of state, that still have the Queen 
a symbol of the reminder of racism, of what happened to black people, the oppression that they were subjected to by the queen. Even, in fact, even now, as we speak, the Queen's Buckingham Palace have laws that prohibits black people who look like me from working in office positions. Do you know which positions they reserve for people who look like me? They reserve servants' position for people who look like me because that's all they see as us. That's the only thing they see from us. And it's shameful that black people continue to be used as props just so that the royal family can do and have its PR. It's just shameful and it's disgusting. And I have to talk about and cover this matter today in this podcast because the scenes of what I have witnessed, I cannot even imagine or even fathom as to why Cambridge PR team, Kensington Palace PR team could ever think that putting children behind fences would be a good look. I don't understand. Now, Prince William and Kate Milton's trip, which began with a stop in Belize, followed by a scheduled visit to Jamaica and the Bahamas, was organized at the Queen's behest. As some countries debate cutting ties to the monarchy like Barbados did in November, which is the best decision that Barbados ever, ever made. And thank you, Barbados, for removing the queen. You are very, very intelligent, intelligent, and very, very smart people. And I believe that when you see these pictures of children being put behind street fences, and then Prince William and Kate Milton coming to apparently greet them there. Just showcases the need and why they just had to abolish the monarchy. And I'm hoping the maker can follow suit and do it. Unfortunately, the Prime Minister for Jamaica has been put into the Queen's Privy Council. So I don't want to put too much hopes in the fact that Jamaica would be independent and remove the queen as the head of state. I don't want to put too much hope in it because these things that happen, the thing that I'm seeing while the royal family operates, it's just disgraceful. They can just control absolutely anyone. They can have control of absolutely anywhere, anyone. Now, Mike Henry, a veteran Jamaican lawmaker, said in a phone interview that while the topic has been discussed, he worries that demands for an apology and reparations would be rendered moot if the island stopped pledging allegiance to the Queen. Maziki Them, a senior lecturer at the University of West Indies, noted that Jamaicans have been seeking reparations for decades. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Mike Henry, veteran Jamaican lawmaker. Black people were lashed. And do you know who was paid, who received reparations, the slave owners' masters. They are the one who receive reparations. Britain paid the last payment in 2015 to slave owners. They paid the last payment. But yet, you stand here and say that it may not happen if we ditch the queen. You deserve, you should ditch the queen. You should ditch the queen and remove and abolish the monarchy because they don't like us in the first place. People who look like me, they don't like us. They do not like us. And that's a fact. That's a fact. They don't like us. And they don't even pretend to hide that they don't like us. Look at what they did to Megan. They chased her out of the country. And we all need to open our eyes. We all need to open our eyes. And I'm thankful for the members of the squad who have opened their eyes to the atrocities that keep on being committed by the so-called members of the farm, the royal family, and UK tabloids. We have all seen it and joined this global community to fight against injustice that we have seen Megan experience just for the crime of falling in love with a white prince of the UK. That's all. She has been bullied 
abused to the point of even thinking about taking her own life. And I'm glad that Megan said this, that life is worth living. Life is worth living. D despite the many things that they've been through, life is worth living. And she truly is someone who I deeply admire and support always and forever. Now, Maziki Thames continued to say this, that this is not a new cause. She said in a phone interview as she prepared to join the protest. The question is whether it will get any traction, whether the British are ready to contend with their history. The British Empire controlled Jamaica for more than 300 years and forced hundreds of thousands of African slaves to build the island under brutal conditions. Sugar replaced tobacco and cocoa as the main crop, while some 430 sugar estates reported by the mid-1700s up from 57 nearly a century prior. According to Jamaica Information Services, a government agency, the group protesting the royal visit noted in its letter that the British raped and killed thousands of slaves as it, as it sought an apology for 60 reasons, including, and I quote, for refusing to acknowledge the historic trade in Africans as a crime against humanity and for pretending that the British led the abolition movement when our ancestors worked, prayed, and fought very hard for this. The fear that I have seen from Cape Milton of even shaking the hands of black people has been too much. Too much. Reminds me of what I saw when they took a picture with LeBron James, the king, LeBron James. Just It just reminds me and of that. And this is a consistent, consistent theme. It keeps happening time and time again. I really think that they need to learn about this matter. They need to be educated about this matter. On racism. To try and control the racism even in public. Because what I've seen is that they can't even control it. Now... Someone continued by saying this, that, that, and I quote, that doesn't speak to us in the way they might imagine that speaks to us, she said. In the 20th century, Jamaicans have moved beyond celebrating the crown. Now, Prince William and Kate are scheduled to spend two days in Jamaica, where they are expected to meet with government officials and tour Trench Town the gritty birthplace of Rocksteady and Reggae where Bob Marley grew up. Bob Marley fought against oppression. He talked about it in his reggae songs. He truly is a, is a king of reggae. He talked about it in his reggae songs. But yet the royal family continues to do this to people of color, put them behind street fences so that they can, you know, they won't catch anything by shaking a black person's hand. That's a message that I want to send to Kate Milton and Prince William. You won't catch anything. Now, ahead of their trip, Jamaican singer Beanie Man told TV show Good Morning Britain that the UK still controls the Commonwealth of Jamaica. It's all about the Queen and the Queen serve and the Queen this and that. But what are they doing for Jamaica? They're not doing anything for us. And I, and it's true. It's facts. This tour is being just called what it is. A charm offensive. That's what they're calling it. They're not calling it royal duties or anything. Because this is just another trip for Prince William and Cape Milton. A PR trip. The monarchy has said that Britain and Jamaica have a strong trade relationship with the island exporting goods including rum and raw cane sugar to the UK. It also noted the creation of programs targeting poverty, security, natural disaster management, social issues and the economy. An estimated 55,000 British citizens live in Jamaica, while some 800,000 people of Jamaican descent live in the UK. The relationship between the two countries soured in recent years after some Caribbean 
people who had long lived in Britain legally were denied jobs, housing, or medical care, with some deported because they didn't have the required paperwork. Britain has since never really paid any form of reparations towards slaves. They've only ever paid slave owners. And the fact is that they treat the fact that Jamaicans practically have to, you know, they don't have, you know, the visas. What I'm trying to say is that Jamaicans practically need visas to go to the UK. While the Queen is their head of state. They need visa still. And sometimes they're even rejected to go to the UK while the Queen remains the head of state. People need to wake up and stop being used as props. Please, please, I am begging you, Jamaica. I am begging you, Belize. I am begging you, Bahamas. Wake up. Please, please, I am begging you. Wake up. Now, the Bahamas National Reparations Committee has released a statement taking issue with the government's sponsorship of the royal visit. Now, they said this in an open letter. Allow me to read you the open letter dated March 22, 2022. It said this, Celebrate Queen Elizabeth's 70-year reign on the throne of England. The Duke and Duchess of Cambridge will visit the Bahamas from March 24 to March 26, 2022. During the course of their trip, they will experience a grand cultural showcase in New Providence, witness the devastation of Hurricane Dorian firsthand in Abaco, and visit award-winning coral farms in Grand Bahama. There is no doubt that the organizing committee have done a stellar job in accommodating the British royal family and by many standards, this trip to accommodate the royal family will be seen as a resounding success. However, once William and Kate have passed over the newly paved roads, driven by the freshly painted walls, and waved to the school children who have been pulled out of their classes to stand and watch them go by. Do you see that? That's what they do. That's what they do. What will the Bahamian people be left with? This visit, as I've said, and I can't, I can't really want to reiterate this, that royal visits don't add anything to the people of Jamaica, or the people of Bahamas. They do nothing. They pull children off schools, get them to sit by the fence, then greet them from the fence, reminding me of what they did during slavery, of what continues to happen. It's just wrong and disgusting. As I continue to read this open letter, he said this, that we, the members of the Bahamas National Reparations Committee, recognize that the people of the Bahamas have been left holding the bag for much of the cost of this extravagant trip. Why are we footing the bill for the benefit of a regime whose rise to greatness was fueled by the extinction, enslavement, colonization, and degradation of the people of this land? Why are we being made to pay again? You know, allow me to pause there. What's worse about this trip is the fact that the people of Bahamas, the people of Jamaica are footing the bill, not the billion dollar royal family. They're not footing this trip. William and Kate are not footing this trip. The people of Jamaica, Bahamas, Belize, they're the ones footing the bill for this trip. Children are being removed out of schools, dragged out of schools, and put behind fences so Prince William and Kate Milton can get their pictures next to black people who look like me. It's just, we need to stop being used by these people. We need to stop. We seriously need to stop being used. Now, as I continue this podcast and reading this open letter, it says this, the visit commemorates 70 years since Queen Elizabeth's accession to the throne of imperialism. More years than the Bahamas has been a sovereign nation. The Bahamas National Reparations Committee asserts that we as Bahamians must have a clear understanding of what this true trip truly means. We are not beholden to the British monarchy in any way. And we do not owe them a great a debt of gratitude for anything. 
not for our culture, religion, or system of governance. Instead, the monarchy has looted and pillaged our land and our people for centuries, leaving us struggling with underdevelopment left to pick up the pieces. In the words of Sir Hilary Beckles, chair of the CARICOM Reparations Commission, colonialism was devastating and we are tired of footing the bill. We are tired of paying literally with our lives for the maintenance of a paradigm in which we are exploited so others could be exalted. It is time now for reparatory justice. The time is now for reparations. The CARICOM Reparations Commission, CRC, is a regional body created to establish the moral, ethical, and legal case for the payment of reparations by the governments of all the former colonial powers and the relevant institutions of those countries, the nations and people of the Caribbean community, for the crimes against humanity of native genocide, the transatlantic slave trade, and a radicalized system of chattel slavery. In 2013, the Bahamas became a member state of the Commission and established the BNRC, which affirms the Commission's 10-point reparations plan. The first point of this plan is for governments of Europe to offer a full and formal apology for their crimes against humanity. The Duke and Duchess may not be compelled to make such a declaration during their visit to our shows. They may not be able to, at this time to speak on behalf of the Queen and their government at this time. However, they can no longer ignore the devastation of their heritage. They and their family of royals and their government must acknowledge that their diverse economy was built on the backs of our ancestors and then they must pay. As God and the ancestors would have it, the royal visit to the Bahamas for, falls squarely on the 15th anniversary of the United Nations International Day of Remembrance of the Victims of Slavery and the Transatlantic Slave Trade, March 25th. We, the children of those victims, owe it to our ancestors to remember. We owe it to our ancestors to demand a reckoning and to demand accountability, healing and justice in the words of our great Tony McKay, also known as Exuma the Obi Man. They must pay me for my blood in the water. Pay me for my son and my daughter. Pay me for my brothers and my sisters. Pay me for all of my dead. Pay me for the blood that you shed. Pay me for what you owe me. I come to collect everything that you owe me. Wow, 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 wow. That has been deeply, deeply emotional. It has been really really emotional and our podcast now is coming to an end now black lives matter uk tweeted this allow me to say what black Lives matter tweeted they said it's giving human zoo vibes these pictures of cape milton actually coming close to black people next to a fence and even being afraid of them it's giving us human zoo vibes according to a tweet from Black Lives Matter UK. And Raheem Sterling was being used to get the crowds out. And it's just wrong how they keep on using black people as a token. And someone reminded me, called Pan Pam Ramberg, reminded me of a picture of Megan next to black children. And said this, this is what a real queen looks like. She uplifts her people, which is what Megan has done and continues to do to this day. And, ladies and gentlemen, when you look at the pictures of Meghan in Cape Town, South Africa, during the royal tour of South Africa in 2019, you can clearly see a family. People happy to see her. People in love with her. People adoring her. Meghan, the Judge of Sussex. And what you see today from Cape Milton, these pictures are one of the most disgusting things I've ever seen in my entire life. This is just wrong. Just, just so, so wrong and very much disgusting. It just goes to show what they see whenever they look at people like me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, someone called Samrat Mitra said this on Twitter. 
my bills are rising. I can't afford to keep hitting on sometimes. My apologies. Main pool are worse off. I can't afford show pieces or mantle pieces anymore with the tax rises. Yet, yet we keep on paying for the monarchy yearly. And they never do anything. We didn't vote for them. Abolish the monarchy. The time has come to say enough is enough. The time of being used as props by the monarchy is enough. I'm glad that people are finally opening their eyes. I'm thankful for that. Now, Dr. Shola, I'll end this podcast by saying this. Dr. Shola said this and tweeted this. If the British monarchy is not a racist institution, why hasn't it apologized for slavery, colonization it conceived and its parliament executed? Why hasn't it paid reparations for wealth it stole and continues to exploit under different guys today but same legacy? And the pictures we see today tells you why. They tells you why of how they see people who look like me. It tells you what they see of us. And I'll continue fighting injustice, fight oppression, fight racism, always and forever, and call it out. And I'm glad and thankful that you all join me in calling out this racism. I'm thankful to each and every single one of you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you so, so much. With so much love, Francisco Family TV on YouTube. Kindly hit that like and subscribe button for daily and consistent content. Let's all open our eyes and I'm hoping that the time comes that Commonwealth countries that still have the Queen as the head of state open their eyes and stop being used as props. As props. Stay tuned to our next video. I love you so, so much, family. We condemn racism in all its forms and discrimination. Love you, family. Hello and welcome back Sasko Family TV. As I end this podcast, I'd like to thank you so much for watching our video. It means the absolute world to us. Kindly like, subscribe, and support our ever-growing family on YouTube. Kindly hit that like and subscribe button for daily and consistent content. We post every single day. And it will mean the absolute world to us if you support our channel by liking, subscribing, and leaving a comment below. If you wish to donate to our channel, kindly send to our PayPal email briankiputo95 at gmail.com in our description box or to our Netella account, also briankiputo95 at gmail.com. Your support will mean the absolute world to us, with PayPal being the preferred option for this channel. Kindly stay tuned to our next video and thank you, thank you so much to every single person that has ever supported our family with so much love stay tuned to our next video and i'm hoping that you're having a great fantastic day and this podcast made you feel much much better have a great day family thank you